Hey guys, this is Christy from 52 Hider 3D with the latest offering from the Blender Foundation, Blender 2.72. I have the release candidate here. You can download the release candidate from the link in the description, or you can wait just a few weeks and, or in fact, possibly a few days and get the official stable release when it comes out. So this is going to be a quick overview of the um, most important features of the new 2.72. So let's have a look and see what we've got. First is the um, new splash image that, as I said on Twitter, I'm not sure what it is, but it looks quite cool. I'm still not sure what it is, but it still looks quite cool. First feature we're going to look at is fairly boring but useful. Um, we now have um, GPU support for volumetrics and subsurface scattering on the experimental GPU kernel. So change your feature set to experimental and have fun rendering subsurface scattering and volumetrics on your graphics card. It's still in the fairly early stages of development, so um, it's going to be f fairly slow. Some people won't find it any faster than using their processor. That was a quick feature overview, wasn't it? Let's move on to the next one. Cool new things coming. Pi menus. Um, they have been talking about bringing Pi menus in since... I started using Blender and that was about three years ago. Um, but now they have finally arrived as an add-on. You have to go into the user preferences and enable the Pi Menus official add-on. Basically they replace or uh, add more functionality to some hotkeys that change states. So the most obvious one being the tab key that changes the mode. So instead of either pressing tab to just toggle between object and edit mode or choosing a particular mode through here, you can now press tab. You get this menu up, which is called a pie menu, which you can then choose a particular option from. So I want to go into edit mode. I just press edit mode and I go into edit mode. Now you might think this is rather slow um, and it's probably easier just to use the old tab system, but what you can do is if you hold down tab, move over in the direction of a particular option and release, it moves, it changes to that, that mode. And you can do this really fast. So I'm going to change into edit mode, like that, change into object mode, like that, change into sculpt mode, it's up. So, so long as you remember where the um, the items are in the menus, you don't ever actually have to wait until the menu appears. You can just go object mode, edit mode, sculpt mode, object mode, which should speed up workflows quite significantly, I think, particularly with things where you're not just generally toggling between two options. The other um, main place it's going to be useful is in um, the uh, draw type selection. So you can choose solid, wireframe, bounding box, rendered. All of the options you can choose from this menu can now be um, found on the Z Pi menu. So solid, oh, actually that's solid, that is shade smooth shade flat which have now been added to that menu which is quite useful um, bounding box I'm just trying to remember where they all are rendered is that one solid is down it's quite cool um, the only downside I can see is it'll take a while to get used to so I'm often pressing tab to change mode and forgetting that you have to now select an option from the pie menu that should get better. It also will not be very uh, good for touchpad users, but then not many people use touchpads with Blender. And 
if they do they can always just disable the add-on and go back to um, the old system of doing things. It's also available on the control shift tab uh, the snap menu like that and I think it's available a few other places. Oh Q to change uh, view um, I don't know if that Q was there before or not actually before the pie menus I don't ever remember there being a Q uh, menu um, yeah, so that's going to be fun. Um, it also will free up some other hotkeys, I believe, because now you use tab for all mode changes. You no longer have to use shift tab and control tab and alt tab for different modes, so we can start assigning new commands to those hotkeys. Moving on um, into edit mode with my pie menu there. Um, we have the Mesh Intersect tool, which will be familiar to people who have used SketchUp. Um, and this was always something that I found was it was pretty much the only thing that SketchUp had that Blender didn't. Um, so it basically I have two overlapping cubes here, but they're not the same mesh. They just go through each other. They don't actually their geometry doesn't actually join in any way. So if I select one of these and type intersect into the uh, search, uh, the spacebar search menu, and press click intersect, uh, saying no intersections found. So if you go over to your tool shelf and choose selected to unselected, and that will um, check where the um, it detects intersections between selected and unselected mesh. So and you can see it has generated a whole pile of vertices there so they actually join together. However, I'll show you this just quickly, they don't actually join. Um, it creates two sets of new vertices, one on each side of the intersection. So if you want them to actually join and be connected, select everything, press W and click remove doubles. And that makes them actually all join up. Last um, one for this scene is there is a new node on the compositor um, which basically allows you to fake volumetrics very easily which is really good if you don't have a very fast computer or you just can't be bothered to set up a whole load of volumetric lighting. Um, let me just render this and show you. Actually, on that one. Here we go. It is a sunbeams node. Um, you can change the ray length of the volumetric rays like that you can also choose your um, the particular origin point of the light rays so there I if it's 0 0.5 0 0.5 it's in the middle but I can shift over the origin point over that way so the light goes like that or the other way so the light goes like that I can move it up and down the light goes in a particular direction. And that's just a quick and easy way to fake it, and as you can see it's really fast and processor efficient. Um, new scene. Um, just two more things to go for now. Uh, let me close that. Freestyle is now available in Cycles, um, so I'm not quite sure, I mean I know they're trying to phase out the internal render engine, but I do not currently see any benefit in using Freestyle with Cycles, given that Cycles is slower but better for photorealistic, but then Freestyle tries to do non-photorealistic stuff. Um, it doesn't really make much sense to me. 
However, I'm not a freestyles person. All I have managed to get freestyle to do is, wait for it, put big lines around my objects. I mean, that's quite nice, and uh, I can see some uses for that, but I can't quite see what I can't quite work out how to get it to do much else. I really need to go away and watch a freestyle tutorial. Anyway, that will be useful to all your you freestylers out there. Um, so we go on to our last thing, which is Whoopi, another add-on. So go to File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and turn on Layer Management. This is going to be so useful um, for big and complicated scenes. You need to go over to the Layers tab on the tool shelf and you can see each layer can then be assigned a name you can turn it on and off from here okay, so I'm going to turn off the spheres, I'm going to turn off the cubes, I'm going to turn off the lights this is going to be so useful you can make a particular layer go to wireframe I think, yeah there we go um, so you can easily view other view others more easily, you can select every object in a layer just with a single click, um, you can keep track of everything so much more easily, it works much more like the Photoshop layer system, you can even group layers into um, layer groups and then uh, do extra things with them. I'm going to keep this permanently on just because I hate the fiddly little layer system. I hope this gets um, integrated fully into Blender without you having to use the add-on, um, but even so it's great just to have the add-on. So ending on that uh, cheery note of having named layers, thanks for watching. If there's anything I've missed, just drop me a line. You can um, post below this video. You can post to my Facebook page, you can tweet me at 52hider3d, you can post on Google+. Plus. Uh, is there anything else you can do? You can probably send me a letter, you know. Um, thanks for watching. Goodbye.